of our students, <coughs> and our Philippine leaders, <coughs> go back to their homeland. So we are few in number, but for me, I never feel we are few in number because always I remind that when this church was planted, yeah, in the morning service, preacher was one, congregation was one, me. And then only afternoon service, only Filipino members came. And then especially during uh, vacation time, uh, we really become, we can feel. And there's more, I do not feel we are small because uh, Jesus, I believe that, two, three persons gathered together in his name, he's always with us. So uh, church is not, uh, you know, valued according to the number. If two to three people gather together, we're everywhere, not in the shape of a church building, everywhere in the field, any place, two to three Christians gather together in his name, then in his church is great worship. So this worship also, I pray and uh, I pray that may the Lord bless our worship and then our, you know, individual altar, we are going again toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And especially whenever this kind of vacation time and the many members uh, go back to their country, I remind our sister Dulce, who is not able to go back or visit her house, her country for a long time, even though we slept in her house, but she couldn't. So I pray more her uh, so that she can, the Lord, may bless her, comfort her, and then she's very happy because of a newborn baby <laughs> in this Christmas season. Beautiful grandchild, and then he received wonderful gift from Sister Dur's boss, Shelby. Yeah, while ago she showed me the pictures. It was so uh, lovely. And maybe some of you already wondered in your heart, ah, every morning service, uh, the city someone is from First Peter, and then this afternoon his wife also deal with uh, First Peter, same book. But you see, uh, I heard in some Western church, there is a very interesting also preachings, preachings from exactly same passage, two preachers preach in the same worship. But the preaching is very different with the same passage. So you don't need to think about this is same book with husband and wife. <laughs> I have my own <laughs> you know, teaching. I never discuss with my husband. Uh, and then um, now Pastor I'm still with the entire uh, book, little by little. And then if you look at the last chapter, chapter 5, Peter, the author of this book, uh, exalt to, to two groups, two elders and young group. So verses 1, 2, 4 is to the <coughs> elders group. And then to this passage, verses 5 to even 7, even 10, yeah, this is to young group. There are many issues. But I reduced only uh, passage regarding humbleness. And then I want you to focus on verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time, which Sarah also memorized on the way to come to church this morning. Also in Nepal last week, uh, last, last week, when Pastor Nam and I have a morning devotion time, we really meditate and agreed this verse is really true through our experience. So in these uh, uh, passages, uh, elder exalt to the young people uh, around four issues. First one is submissive to the elder. And then second one is be humble and wait until the due time. Third, cast anxiety on God. First is that resist the devil, being self-controlled and alert. And today we're going to focus on, just like I said, number two, be humble and wait until the due time. I guess every one of us never be born in such an awkward place, like outside of house or in cold place or in bad places. 
or even mothers, including myself, delivered our babies in such a terrible place. See? So in terms of humbleness, Jesus is not only the best example of us, but in this Christmas season, he make us, I mean, the story of his uh, uh, birth make us to be humble also. Who is our Lord Jesus Christ? He's King of Kings. King of Kings. But he was born in stable. You see, whenever we look at Christmas card, the stable look like so you know, cozy and beautiful and warm and pretty. But it is actually man-made story, man-made atmosphere. As you know, stable in the time of Jesus was very awkward, very cold, very terrible. And then our Lord Jesus was born there. And then he was lying in the manger, which is the eating bowel of animals, which is very smelly. So no matter, you know, human, you know, describe the Christmas card, the not your manger and stable beautiful way, but the truth is different, terrible. Then when I deliver my second son Samuel in London, sometimes uh, Samuel's friend, Korean friend, asks Samuel, hey, you are lying, you are really born in London? Oh, yes, I, I was born in London and we cannot believe you, <laughs> something like that. But in general, London General Hospital, I really delivered Samuel there and then I experienced like, you know, the treatments is like for queen, wow. I realized that in that sense also, England is really developed country in that way. Yeah, they treat newborn, I mean new mother in such a wonderful way. After I delivered the baby in such a good room, they brought you know, a field chair and then made them and made me to stand there and then another one is hold the baby in the you know, comfortable box. And they brought us to such also new comfortable places and then there are so many experiments and then many doctors come and ask wow it was wonderful and third uh, child Sarah I delivered Sarah in Korea after 15 years after I delivered my first son Joseph for 15 years there are huge development for new mother I'm surprised in separate room, comfortable bed, all oh, the treatment was wonderful. Wow. And I look at young mothers, young mothers the same, they do not realize how much this is wonderful treatment. Because I have experienced my own, you know, a long time ago in Korea. But what about you? I, I guess you also born in such a comfortable place. Yeah, your mother delivered you. Not outside of your house. You also deliver your baby or babies in such a good place, treat well. But our Lord Jesus really was born in such a terrible, cold, you know, such a remote place. And then made us also, you know, to be humble. He is king of kings. I am sinner of sinners. And then the treatment is terribly different. So today we think about uh, humbleness. Have you watched more game in Korea? In, I mean, in the street of Korea, these games are almost disappeared. But <coughs> even some decades ago, it was very popular. Mall, yeah, uh, like a cousin of mouse. In the some board, there are a lot of uh, uh, toy malls are there. The head mall is come up, come up, come up, come up. Then immediately you have to push the head of mall with hammer. Yeah? If you put exactly put the head of mall, then the score is going up. Going. So you have to be very hurry. Push, 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 push. Because there are many walls, there are many head, you know, come out at the same time. So even though continually push the head, the head of mall continually come out. This is exact illustration in my heart for a long time for decades about humbleness or about pride. So when I was young, I thought if uh, one person, including myself, is disciplined and trained by God, then my pride instinct itself would be transformed, I thought when I was young. But as the time passes, I realized that the pride instinct is still there, never be 
change it. Even though you become very old people, even though you become you know strongly, strictly trained, your and my own pride uh, instinct is still there. And then how so many people become humble servant of God? They simply realize or learn or practice how they take care of their pride and then to be humble. They learn. Still, instinct is there. Pride is instinct is there. Everybody, there is no exception. Even though you know there are wonderful, uh, humble servants of God, his inside is still he has exactly the same pride instincts just like us. But he knows how to control or take care of this pride and then how to be humble. This is we need to know uh, first. So I look at the dictionary definition of humility because in some sense uh, biblical definition from you know, many scholars are confusing. So anyway, when I look at one dictionary, according to this dictionary, it goes like this. An attitude that respects others and does not put oneself in a position. An attitude that respects others and does not put oneself in a position. Our Lord Jesus, who is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he never take any position, but he humbly, he was born in there and then even when he entered as the king in Jerusalem to be crucified, he didn't use any luxurious chariot, but only, you know, little donkey. He sit on little donkey, and then the Bible described because he's gentle and humble. And then Jesus said, I'm gentle and humble. And then this humbleness is the first virtue of the Christians. Even though one Christian is so wonderful with other, with many, so many things, offering a lot of money, he's so smart and talented, achieved so many things, he has done anyway wonderful. But if he's not humble, actually he lost most important thing. In this much, the first virtue of Christian is humbleness. Without learning about how to be humble is nothing for nobody. Uh, in this uh, Nepal mission trip, it was so fruitful, just like I briefly reported to you last Sunday, uh, how our Lord has done wonderful things through GFM. And then lunchtime, I talk uh, with Sister Abono about this uh, seminary, and then she knows about the seminary very well. Then anyway, we are so glad looking at especially three wonderful leaders, Nepali leaders. One is a principal of Vilandra, another one is Dean Goirala, who used to preach here several times, and also uh, uh, chairman of board member, a uh, board meeting uh, of that uh, LPS, uh, who is Nepali American, but surely he's uh, American. They are really uh, smart, and then they really are wonderful uh, full time teachers. Professors, as well as they run big church, so they are all also senior pastors. So they are, their teaching was really practical. I think that this is wonderful. We experienced already in London because when Pastor and I studied in London, there was a seminary LTS in northern part of London. All the faculty members were senior pastors. In Western society, if you do not do pastoral ministry, then you let down the position. So people do not call pastor. If they start to do pastoral ministry, then they just call him brother, which is more practical. Very different from Korea. If you just just ordain forever, you are called as pastor. I think uh, we need to learn something from this Western churches society. But anyway, uh, they are all smart, but we found out three of them are really humble. Uh, so. We became, Pastor and I became more uh, uh, expect what more wonderful things the Lord may do through GFM, also through this Nepali community. And also GFM, our parent church, uh, the first priority, as you know, is, is that we want to help or build our uh, many faculty members, especially for seminary. And then we are looking for those souls who are smart, good. That's why we focus on PhD students. but. Our first concern is humbleness. 
That's why rather than to be able, but to be available. This is more, uh, you know, most important factor my uh, couple is looking for so that we can uh, cooperate together and then until if God allows us and bless us, we, we, we go together until our Lord Jesus Christ so that we can cooperate to expand this kingdom. And First Peter uh, 5, 5 said, God, the later part, God opposes the pride but gives grace to the humble. As you know, in the book of Proverbs or in the book of so many books, humility or humbleness is so important. According to John Piper, who is a uh, you know, influential preacher in America, Humility does not want to be treated better than Jesus has received. Therefore, humility does not repay evil with evil. This is some sense difficult. Sometimes I realize that my real instinct is that very difficult to forgive others if I am not a Christian. If somebody did something wrong, very difficult to forgive. I realized later in my life but of course, I experienced a huge forgiveness from Jesus Christ. That's why I am able to forgive. But anyway, as a human being, it's very difficult to does not repay evil with evil, when, especially when you have power. And also, John Piper continues, humble persons know that they can make mistakes, so they accept criticism and learn through it. Our instinct is that if somebody praises us, we are very happy. But if somebody criticizes, oh, we are not comfortable and want, ready to defend ourselves and make a lot of excuses. But humble pe people do not do it. Ah, we, I am not a perfect person. I can make mistakes. So humbly I accept criticism and then I want I to learn about that. And then humble persons also admit that God determines the time of their death and governs all our work and achievement. You know the story of Haman, yeah? In the story of uh, Esther, how much he was pride. When Queen Esther invited King and himself, he said, you see, he made a feast even before joining the palace, uh, fe palace feast by Queen Esther, only me was invited with king. How much I'm honored. So all the wife and the family members and relative friends congratulate him. Except I'm not happy with this Mordecai, the cousin of, or the uncle of, uh, actually he didn't know that at the time, this uh, Jewish people who never bowed down to me. He, his pride is high size. So later, in the high you know, place of wood where he planned to you know, hang the Mordecai, he himself was hanged because of his pride. And you know that maybe when you read the story of Samson, why Samson foolishly played with dry luck about the secret of his uh, uh, supernatural power, right? Have you wondered about that? When Samson fell in love with dry luck, Trila was tempted by, you know, Philistine officers. If you really uh, dig out the secret of the supernatural power of Samson, they will pay you a lot. So Trila tempted day by day, day by day, yeah? Then from the first point, Samson uh, must have been very careful, but he played with uh, uh, Trila. Why? Because of his pride. In this level, I can handle it. In this level, I can play with this uh, Trila. She looked like very cute. He thought he is able to care about this matter. That's why he said, oh, if you tied my hair in the seven uh, different kinds of uh, you know, style, maybe I lose my power. Oh, anyway, he approached little by little, but he didn't realize that he doesn't have any wisdom or power to control you know, about this issue. But finally, he confessed the truth. Until that, his pride didn't wake him up. That's why finally, he tried a really report, and then his two eyes was gouged out. 
and then he became like a cow, and then he became the play. But when he realized his pride and become humble, rely on God totally, the time was very short. It's a very sad story. Even King David, when he became a king after long, terrible, very strict training, even he, David, you know, made a mistake because of his pride. First, conducting <clears throat> census. Ah, oh, now I'm a king. And then I want to know how much big army I have. I want to check. In that context, it was from pride. From now, our modern sense, it could be right. We have to do conduct our census to check how many army we have, how many size of army we have. But in that context, Job and others are not happy because of king's behavior. But king pushed them to do it continually, quickly. And then later on, because of this, around seventy thousand innocent people were you know, punished by God because of king's uh, mistake. But more terrible thing is that. King David, ah, now I'm king. Secular kings, no problem to take away, to steal others, other people's wife and kill. No problem for secular king. But for Israelite king, it cannot be because for Israelite king, king is, the king is not real king. The real king of Israel is Yahweh. Israel king is just agency. That's why he's not real king. But David, somehow, he became lazy while other, you know, armies, his officers are fighting in the risk of their, their life. He was sleeping, he, he enjoyed the nap. And then right after nap, oh, one lady taking a bus in naked was so beautiful. So he, even though he knew she's married to one, she committed adultery. Even later, he killed her wife, you know, some, such a faithful, you know, servant, he killed. That's why God punished David in much more severe way than other cases. How? The baby between that, you know, fair was killed, even though David prayed in fasting way. And also, David himself was about to be killed by his own son Absalom. He was about to be also taken away his kingship. Not only that, he committed adultery in such a dark, silent, lonely place, remote place, but his ten concubines were you know, raped by his own son Absalom in the daytime under the tent. So that his, you know, shame extremely great. You did it in such a, a dark place, even though I bless you so much, if you need more wives, I would provide more, God said. But you made me so disgraceful, so disappointed, so I will do it on the day. So that your shameless become extreme so like that so this is all about humbleness or uh, pride so today about uh, thinking about humbleness I want you to know about at least first one is first one is I already mentioned even though one soul become mature Christian the instinct of pride is never been changed when it is changing only when Jesus Christ come again and he really transformed our inside and he closed us with a new resurrected body. Then it will be we will be different. Until that time, that means everybody must alert and wake up and try to pray to wake up, try to kill our instinct. Otherwise, even I don't really hear from our members later when you become church leaders, you know, top leaders of a seminary, something like that. You commit adultery. Even Pastor and I must be very careful. So there is no one, all oh, no problem. Because my former previous training is so terrible, painful, that's why now I can handle it. No one can say that. Every day, every moment, we have to you know, careful. Otherwise, the head of more, just like head of more, any time, you know, come out, come out, the pride, come out, come out. Even though I'm careful, careful, careful. But still, already I became pride. From my pride, I said. From my pride, I thought. From my pride, I take an action. Or I try to take an action. So must be very, very careful. That's why Apostle Paul, every day I die. I kill myself. It is our 
ongoing fighting until we die or until we just cry. And second one is that this kind of a humble practice or you know transformation is, is the result of knowing who God is really. Yada, you know, intimate knowledge. And who am I? And who are others? This is three relevant also uh, regarding about biblical wisdom. Especially young men. Yeah? Now even Peter said to young men, why young men is easily pride? Now I'm raising three children, and then I am the one very most close witnesses how young men become grow or learn from their pride to humble attitude. And Joseph case, when he spent time for about more than seven years in America, every each year, whenever he come back home, he become different, different, different. He learned how to be humble. He learned how to. Uh, he he learned how much the family is important, something like that. And then I wait and wait for second son Samuel to be humble. And then somehow he became humble after finish his uh, military duty. Okay. And then now I'm waiting for Sarah. <laughs> yeah, she's still young, but once she leave home since next year and then join the dormitory school, and then she's the one to take care of herself then she will learn. They are all good children, but inside, I look at the inside, the attitude. So young men, they, are, they have you know, bodily strength. And then if they have some talent or power, oh, I am like somebody. I did also. I thought I was somebody. Because in school, especially in family, I'm the youngest, the unique daughter, so my parents always take care of me, you know, praise me. In school also, i like almost the best student in class, in the church. Wow, Esther, you're great, great. So I thought God loves me so much because I'm deserved. I, I spent for a long time with this song. So thank God my self-pride is high. But I had to go through such a long and painful and repeat know, training and then, you know, hardship, trials to learn how to be humble. It was very, very difficult. That's why sometimes I become string mother to Sarah because I want to reduce the, you know, painful training from God because I love her so much. You know that Joseph, Joseph was the man of a dream, right? But he was really immature. He didn't care others' feelings. Just he, when Jacob, his father, lifted him up, he just accepted. He thought, I'm deserved. So, hey, brothers, hear my dreams. In my dreams, all, all of you are bowed down to me. Like in the shape of a star or in the shape of a grain. He didn't care others. And then he just lifted his position high. This Joseph, how much you think, how much is a hard, hard is terrible. So he grown up like a princess, and then one day he became slave, you know, chasing. In ancient time, people, there was no human rights, especially of slaves. Slave is things. Boss can kill, no problem. It's just things, property. And he was maltreated terribly. But by God's grace, he became, you know, like a manager of such a rich and powerful person, Egyptian officer. But one day also, something unfair happened because of the wife, and then he was put into prison, and then day by day, he must, with his own eyes, look at many people went out, out of the prison only when they were dead. You see, we know the result, the blessing result. That's why we just read the Bible. But if we put your emotion, if we put yourself in the story, actually, Joseph's story made me cry a lot. Whenever, not every time, but many, many times I cry reading the story of Joseph when I put my emotion there. Oh, one day, I myself must be like that. I go out of this prison. I actually, I don't, I've done nothing wrong. And then I'm in the prison. And then I, only I can come out of this prison when, they, when I was dead. Then how much his crime, heart crying is severe to God. Lord, you know my situation. What about the dream you gave me? 
I actually have done wrong to my brothers. I was really much, I was terrible. Lord, please, please help me something like that. Do not think God is generous, that's why his training is somehow more mold or soft. And then if I am in extreme place, God will immediately say to me, no. God's training is terrible. Even some people really, you know, ended up with the calamity, just dies. Third one about humbleness is the hardship is of vital importance for gaining this wisdom of humility. So Joseph, when he was finally condemned criminal, he learned, he came to know how to be humble, how to be humble. Even David, David describes, oh, King Saul, why you are looking for people like me, which is a dead dog? Have you thought all about from your frank heart, you are, you are like a dead dog? Dead dog. In this much, you made, him, you made yourself in this Papa. level. I did it. Not only dog, but also like a swan, you know, crawling on the ground. Many times, God made me feel like that, like nobody. Just, you know, powerless. If somebody put stem on it, just die. According to John Megader, there are two purposes of Christians' uh, training. First one is humbleness. Second one is, I find myself, I rely on more God. I pray more often, I pray more seriously, something like that. So, when you are in the midst of terrible trainings and you don't understand the plan of God, then you check yourself. You are getting more to be humble, and then you find yourself to rely on more God. If these two, if these two things happen, then at least you are very hopeful. Because the same story is already in the Bible. Same story happened already over the last 2,000 years, Christian's life. And then nowadays, in the same time, many people are encountering that problem. So when you are in the midst of, you know, training and then you really do not understand then just check now you become more humble now you become more rely on God then definitely there is a uh, wisdom of God lastly Peter said there is a good time in our life regarding humbleness so humble under God's mighty hand then due time due time must be there when we are in the midst of uh, problems and weakness and hopelessness, very difficult to believe. Due time for me is really coming. Is it true? My, my dream really come true? My long life prayer may be really answered? We, because we are human beings, we keep on questioning. But according to Bible, due time is coming. Our dream the time our dream come through is really coming. Even though we are under a first occupation or charge, get an undeserved scolding or injustice, or wait and wait for too long, maybe in this way I'm just a die, but due time must come. Even Joseph, Moses, David, even our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus endured the cross. Even Jesus endured the cross for the joy set before him. Which means if there is no joy coming after his death, maybe as a human being, maybe he cannot endure or the story will be different. So true humbleness, when we learn from Jesus, comes. So outside of Christ, true holiness is impossible. True humbleness is impossible. Only true holiness, true Humbleness possible only in Christ because it's the because our instinct is simple pride so it is impossible to be humble from our inside we just reflect the light of Jesus just like star star doesn't majority of stars do not have their own light why stars are twinkling because it just reflect the sunlight so we just reflect goodness so if something wonderful or something good coming out of us, it is not from us. But Jesus, who is within us, 
from Jesus is coming. That's why if some people praise us, people you know really uh, uh, give big hand to us, we have to think at least in our even in our head, this is not me who deserve to get this praise. Only Jesus Christ. He blessed me, and then this wonderful character came from Jesus who is in me because yeah. nothing good exists within me. We mustn't forget Bye -bye. about this. They said when Jesus entered Jerusalem as the king, he entered, say to the door of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle. What, you, what does it mean gentleness? I explained already. I am gentle and humble. Gentle means complete obedience in any conditions, complete obedience. Even though his flesh and blood all tear down and shed, and there's so much, you know, maltreated, terrible, but still Jesus obeyed to God. So not only for glory, but also shame, pain, any kind of maltreatment, misunderstanding, loneliness, criticism. If this is necessary in order to obey God, then we have to accept it. So Jesus gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. And then even Jesus, in his due time, he was resurrected. And then from the resurrection to till now, to till this moment, he is praised, he is loved by so many Christians. He is, uh, you know, worshipped, honored, so much loved by so many people. So even if even Jesus have due time, then every one of us also have due time. Maybe some of you already experienced small or entire due time. Even us. When I finished second day's the Leviticus, le Leviticus lecture in Nepal, it was really emotional moment. I really wanted to cry, but because of people, I just control myself. Because when many months, when you prepare the Nepal trip and teaching, every evening time when my husband and I pray about that, I was uncertain. So I just pray, Lord, maybe I went through some painful bodily painful time, but just bless me, just finish well my lectures. But as a human being, I was sad. Yeah. But even though I was disturbed a lot, uh, the sleeping during night time, but when I even look at the picture, my face was shining. And then I was so happy when our sister said last Sunday, oh, Mr. Dre, I want to I, I eager to hear from you, and uh, I simply describe. I felt like uh, you know, uh, the newborn mother, newborn mother's breast. If the breast is filled with milk, we start to feel pain. Our solid brothers, you never ever experienced right in your life. <laughs> so listen carefully for your wives or for your you know sisters anyway. It's become more and more painful, and then the breast become big and hard. So only when baby start to suck drank the milk in such a short time, then the baby becomes satisfied, even mothers are satisfied. Very happy. Like that, I felt that. Whenever I writing, especially the dissertation for a long time, I wanted to give up, I, want, I, I felt uh, I couldn't stand anymore, maybe I stop here, this only until now, maybe this is my portion, something like that, so many moments, and then I imagined, Maybe in, the, in someday, I will teach such a sweet and wonderful the Word of God to people who are hungry for the Word of God. And then there are so many questions. The questions is not only the Leviticus, um, but many questions also from empty concept. And then anyway, I was able to answer, even especially for drinking blood issue. Even faculty members was challenged, and then they changed their knowledge and then they also proclaim it. they will study hard about this one. They taught students uh, even nowadays stop to drink the you know, blood. So theologically even blood we are allowed to drink or eat but ethically we do not drink the blood but like in the food there is no Christ Korean Christian who reluctant to eat the blood you know soup. There are very you know, famous blood soup. 
we don't feel any guilt. Theologically, it's okay. We just ethically and just careful to bring blood is out. So from this teaching, I learn also a lot. Also, I developed my teaching about Leviticus. Especially, I checked, I felt because many questions came from even Otis anti sense. So, aha, uh -huh. uh, Leviticus is really seedbed of New Testament theology. So Leviticus, in this sense, Leviticus is the most important book in OT. Because anti authors quote a lot. So many critical anti theological issues came from Leviticus. I that is what I experienced. So I was very happy. And then Pastor and I frankly we feel like such a long to wait, long, long, long to wait. The new time seems to start to come upon us. Only, <laughs> only I have physical um, problem still, but by faith, my husband and me confessed, ah, even my health should be recovered soon or gradually. There is one sign is that the Lord miraculously allowed us such a wonderful new house in Yangpyeong area whose you know, air is so fresh, good water, near to act where I can teach. There are serious miracles that happen. So with a little money, we are able to buy such a luxurious house. Especially this morning I share a little bit. My decades prayer and wish was I wanna make mini library in my home, in my house, especially library. When I was uh, in Ezra Bible Institute uh, uh, graduate school, the library is wonderful. Because the library, the library has from Genesis to Revelation, there are wonderful commentaries of books are there. So always it was in my you know picture in my heart. One day I want to create in my house mini library which I put you know some books regarding Genesis, you know Exodus. Of course, already I have a lot of books for Leviticus, but until Revelation. And then this house allow me to do because this house is very spacious. And then first, the second, and the third floor provide. So wow, I couldn't believe, but it became true. Not only this one, but also so many other things. Um, even Sarah, since next year, she leave a house and join the doctor school. So this time, Pastor and I really, for the first time, can focus on our own ministry. No children at all, no parents, no other things. Our responsibility almost finished. So um, even books, by God's grace, also published in such a good way. Many things come together. So we realize that this is like a due time. But I prayed already, Lord, even though we enjoyed, and then we enjoyed the dream come true, but for how many decades? We will die also soon in some, in some day. So until the moment God call us to live the last living, let us be faithful, let us be humble, something like that. But anyway, enjoy, start to feeling the, the enjoy what you can read, why not? So I encourage you, you also have, must have due time, your dream will come true. But you need to, yeah, you need to go through some kind of strict training or so many things to learn. But I don't mean in the rest of my life, in the future, there is no harsh result, difficult to know. They will be, they are still, yes, they are still, difficulties comes, but at least since uh, in 1983, when I was joining uh, nationwide the scale of college students, some of Bible camp, yeah, God called me to be a Bible teacher. From then on, I never ever uh, forget about that calling. When, even whenever I feed breastfeeding to my children, I look at the Hebrew <laughs> grammar uh, study in the notebook because this calling caused me to do it. Of course, my priority was uh, family and children, but I tried to find the time to study English, Hebrew, Greek, and the Bible, and then God seemed to reward me. So my dissertation, my articles are start to be read in different seminaries and by scholars as I really praise the Lord. So I even complained for a long time, Lord, 
you decided to make me to be PhD uh, doctor, then why not in my earlier time? It could be much wonderful. Then I don't need to be sick like this. I complained for a long time, but now there is no complaint at all because I realized that you know teaching the Bible is not only coming from head, but from life experience also. It affects a lot to interpret the Bible because human beings not analyzed people, but you know, holistic people, holistic being. That's why life experience was very important. So I praise the Lord, and then no matter I'm aged or young, like doesn't matter. Only Lordship, let His plan be in my life. This is my attitude, and then never be uh, forget. If you be humble and humble, then due time God will lift you up in your due time. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, you are living God. That is what with my friend in America agreed together. You are living God, not that one. Because of our immaturity or because of our lack of understanding, many times we doubt your love, your care, your promises. But in due time, you make us to realize and then you make us to confess you are living God. All the glory and glory and honor to you. But Lord, our instinct is still very pride, terrible. And then you hate the pride, only you bless those who are humble. But Lord, this is impossible for us to be humble by our own practice and power. So help us, Lord, so that we can learn from our Lord Jesus Christ why he uh, came to the earth in such a humanist way, and then why what he tried to teach us, Lord. Most difficult thing for us is to be humble. Lord. We pretend to be humble, but from our heart, we are still very pride. And then many cases, many moments, still we do not realize this is pride. Actually, the thought, the speaking, the action really came from our pride but we never ever realized. Oh Lord, help us to realize, look at uh, such things in right way so that we do not remain as the blind man. Oh, help us, Lord, so that we can follow your um, holiness, your humbleness, Lord, so that we can be on light and salt in this world, Lord. Continually teach us the spirit of Jesus Christ, Lord. Then in due time, you will lift us up. We praise you, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.